AFI invite you to join us for the thrilling adventures of the Lone Ranger. Are you still there? A fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver. The Lone Ranger. Faithful Indian companion Toto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I'm Silver. Roscoe Marsh and Frank Rice, professors of astronomy, adjusted a powerful telescope on the summit of a hill. The men, on leave from an eastern university, were seeking a site for an observatory. Professor Marsh said, We'll make a final check on the haze that rises from the gorge between here and Mount Messiah. Mm. Are you focusing on that old cabin on the side of Messiah? Yes. <laughs> The old man who lives there has visitors. <laughs> That's unusual. It's the first time we've seen anyone in this area except the old man. Yes, two horses are standing here. Frank, huh? one of the men has a gun. He shot the old man, shot him. Now the two are dragging the old man into the cabin. Here, you watch and describe the men when they come out. I'll have my notebook ready to write down what you say. While Professor Rice kept his eye to the telescope, his associate looked at his watch, noticed the time in a notebook, then wrote the dictated description of the two gunmen. Now one of the men is opening a box, taking out papers, unfolding them. Oh, going too fast for you? No, no, I'm, I'm getting it. Wait, Roscoe. Smoke's coming from a window. They've set fire to the cabin. With the old man still inside? Yes. Frank, someone's coming. What? There. Look, a masked man. And an Indian. Don't be alarmed. Don't shoot us. We're unarmed. Easy, Peter, big fella. Easy, fella. You're nothing to fear. We're friends. But that mask... It serves a purpose, but it's not the purpose of an outlaw. We saw your telescope from the valley and came here because we're interested. Uh, who are you? I'm Professor Rice, and my colleague's name is Marsh. Roscoe Marsh. He, too, is a professor of astronomy. You were viewing something through the telescope. You seemed excited. We saw two of you. I see smoke on side of Mount Messiah. The cabin there is on fire. That must be Jeremiah Colby's cabin. It's the only cabin on the mountain. Do you mind if I look through your telescope? No. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, I've heard of Colby. He's known as the hermit of Mount Messiah. Do you see the cabin? Yes. Flames are beginning to break through the roof. Do you see the murderers? Murderers? What murderers? Two men who shot the, the hermit. I don't see anyone. I saw them shoot the old man, drag him inside. Uh, Frank, uh, Professor Rice, saw the same men come out with a small box. They opened it and looked at papers. Then I saw smoke coming from a window. That's when you arrived. You and the Indian. You mean hermit inside burning cabin? He must be. The cabin will burn to the ground long before we can reach it. We're helpless. Yes, that's how we felt when the murder was committed. Even if we'd had guns, we couldn't have helped the poor old man. No gun would shoot that far. Otto, you watch the cabin through the telescope. Uh Uh-huh. Can you professors describe the gunman? Oh, yes, yes, indeed. Uh, We've made notes. Here they are. We've been trained to make accurate observations. Professor Marsh and I have often witnessed and reported the destruction of stars and planets in outer space. These descriptions should help bring the gunman to justice. Are you really interested in seeing criminals brought to justice? Yes, Mr. Roscoe. Someday you may learn that I'm on the side of the law. Strange. It's your duty to report what you saw to the sheriff in Redville. I agree. Well, here are your notes. The sheriff will want them. We'll start packing our gear at once. Uh, what are you and the Indian going to do? We we'll ride to the cabin and try to find the gunman's trail. But there's an impassable gorge between this hill and Mount Messiah. The Indians once showed us a secret way across the gorge. He must have Yes, sir. No, it's not dead. Why? Why? Him crawling out of the cabin on hands and knees. Looked like him hurt bad. But he's alive. Uh-uh. Now, him far enough, so fire not reach him. Well, there's a reason for us to go there in a hurry. Will you men remain near Redville? We'll camp south of town, just inside the big woods. Good. We'll be around as long as there's any chance that we might help in the capture and punishment of those gunmen. Then we may meet again. Come on, Toto. Uh-huh. Easy, 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 Toto. Easy, Toto. Oh, oh. The Lone Ranger and Toto rode hard 
forward to an isolated place where they crossed the gorge on a natural bridge made by a peculiar rock formation, then hurried up the side of Mount Messiah. They drew rein and dismounted near the old hermit, who lay face down on the ground a short distance in front of the smoking ruins of his cabin. He's dead. I don't know how he lived long enough to crawl out of the cabin. Ah. And what we do? You wrap the body in a blanket and take it into the sheriff in Red Viltano. I'll follow the tracks of the men who shot the hermit. Ah. I'll meet you in the professor's camp south of town. Easy, steady, big fellow. Come on, Silver. It was after dark that evening when the two astronomers entered the sheriff's office in Redville. The man seated in the sheriff's chair said, Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. Are you the sheriff? No. The sheriff and his deputy had to take some prisoners to the state pen. The jail being empty, the sheriff left me in charge of the office. Oh, then you're not a real lawman. Yeah, no real enough to take complaints. I'm a special deputy, likewise a lawyer. Come to Mead's name. I'm Mr. Mead, we're astronomers. I'm Frank Rice, and this is Roscoe Marsh. Glad to know you, gentlemen. What's wrong? We want to report a crime. Yeah, go ahead. I'll take your report and refer it to the sheriff. Let me read it. Without mentioning the Lone Ranger and Toto, Professor Rice told of the work he and his associate were doing and reported what they had seen through the telescope. Then Professor Marsh handed over his notes. Hamilton Meade read them, then said, If what you gentlemen say is true, you'd better catch the next train east. Uh, why? You're in danger, and you're not armed. We don't own guns. All the more reason for you to leave here. Those gunmen will surely try to kill the witnesses to their crime. They can't possibly know we saw them. We'll stay and testify against them. Well, uh, you wouldn't be allowed to testify regarding anything seen through a telescope or binoculars. It isn't admissible as evidence here. Uh, a stupid ruling. Uh, gentlemen, you've done all you can by giving me a description of the crooks. I, I advise you to go back east. No, Mr. Mead, we'll hold ourselves available. Please tell the sheriff we'll be camped in the woods south of town. He'll find us there if and when he needs us. Very well. You've been warned. Yes. Come on, Roscoe. For a short time after the professor's left, the man at the sheriff's desk sat frowning at the paper bearing the description of the crooks. Then he crumpled it and struck a match. He set fire to the paper and watched it burn in an ashtray, then crushed the ashes. A few minutes later, Hamilton Mead heard a rap on the door. He crossed the room, opened the door, and saw an Indian lifting a heavy blanket-wrapped figure from the back of a paint horse. What, uh, what goes on? Me bring dead man. Me carry him inside. A dead man? Ah. Him, Jeremiah Colby. Now hold on. That's the coroner's business. And it business the sheriff. Old man murdered. Murdered? Uh, him shot. Put him on that card. Uh, did, uh, did you kill him? No. Me, me not know who kill him. Me find him outside burn cabin. So that's your story, I'm. Huh? Well, I think you killed him. Why, you think you're covered? Put your hands in. But you... Don't reach for your gun. You not regular, sir. Nevertheless, I'm arresting you. You stand still while I take your gun. No, you... Moving with lightning speed, Tom will grasp the wrist of the special deputy and turn the gun. If you pull trigger now, you shoot yourself. I'll kill you. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Continue. While me, a special deputy, and Tonto struggled for possession of the gun, two men entered the office. Hey, you're right here, boys. Hang on, Ham. Drop me with your gun, right? Uh, that should hold a red skin for a few minutes. Yeah, thanks, boys. Close the door. What happened here, Ham? Hey, what's that on the couch? Looks like a body. Yes, it is, Hoke. It's the body of Jeremiah Corbett. What? Right? Oh, that can't be. I'll take a look. Holy and I shot Kobe. Then burned him up inside a shack, just as you told him. This is the hermit, all right, Hoke. 
The Indian found him dead outside his shack. That means we'll have to call his death a murder instead of an accident. Why were you and the Redskin fight? I was trying to arrest him for the murder. Someone's got to hang for it. Well, take his gun and drag him into the cell before he regains consciousness. Right. Give me a hand, Polly. Sure. I hoped you two could steal the old man's bonds and arrange it so as his death would look like an accident. Did we leave this red skin here on the floor of the cell? Yeah. Uh, give me his gun. Sure. Yeah, thank you. Now close and lock the door. When the sheriff returns, I'll charge the Indian with Colby's murder. Good. Shouldn't be hard to frame an Indian for murder. Oak and I'll swear we saw him do it. Did you get Kobe's bonds? Yeah, there's ten thousand dollars left. Yeah, he took them out of the old man's tin box. Here, here they are. Kobe's name's on them in ink. I'll take that off with chemicals. Ham, you're putting them in your pocket. You two get your share after I've cashed them. Now we'd better. Meanwhile, you have another job to do. Yeah, what's that? Get rid of the two men who saw you kill Colby. No one saw us. We made sure there was no one near his shack on Mount Messiah. A couple of astronomers saw you through a telescope on Bald Hill. Uh, they gave me written descriptions of you both. I burned the descriptions, but that won't keep them from telling the sheriff what they saw when he returned. When's he do back in town? He may be in on tonight's train. We gotta work fast. I tried to scare those witnesses out of town, but they didn't scare. So now it's up to you. Where are they? They're camped in the woods, south of town. Yeah, we'll go and shoot them. Not near town. We don't want any more bodies around. What's your suggestion, Ham? Capture them, take them into the mountains, and drop them down an old mine shaft. They don't have guns, so you shouldn't have trouble with them. Now get going. Later that evening, the two scientists were seated beside their campfire in the woods. As Professor Marsh leaned forward to stir the blazing wood, the killers appeared. Are you two? Huh? Watch your hands. Why, I'm coming. Why, you... You're the man who shot the hermit. So you do recognize us. I'd know you anywhere. Oh, what are you going to do? Are you going to shoot us? Well, if you do as we tell you. Now, march your horses. You're going for a ride to the mountains. Stop those guns. Hey, 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 man. Stop them, my friend. I'll get it. Struck in the arm by the Lone Ranger's bullet, Polly fired wildly as he staggered and fell. At that instant, Hulk, who had dropped his gun, leaped behind the two astronomers, then disappeared beyond brushwood, bordering the camp. He's escaping. You're my line of fire. Move, Freddy. Yeah, too late. He's out of sight. It's dark in the woods. Here, take the wounded man's gun. At least we have one of the murderers. Murderers? The men who came here are the ones who killed the hermit. You'll get the other later. Did you pick up his gun? It's right there. Yes, yes. I have it. You better keep close watch while I examine this cook's arm. The man who escaped might have another gun in return. I'll watch for him. My shoulder's killing me. It's not that bad. Lie still while I cut away your sleeve. Oh, here's our kit of medical supplies. Oh, thanks. How did you happen to come here? I followed the killer's tracks from the hermit's cabin until it became too dark to see the trail. Easy, easy. All right. And I came directly here without going through town. When I was near enough to see your fire, I saw the men holding guns on you. So I left Silver a little distance away and moved in. Oh, uh, there. been here? No, but I'm mighty glad you came. I'm sure those crooks meant to murder us. Why? They knew we witnessed their crime. How did they know it? And how did they know where to find you and Rice? I have no idea. You tell me, killer. Were you to call me a killer? You're nothing but a mask, I'll hoot. I'm not a crook. Well, I'm not talking. We told no one we witnessed the murder. Oh. The substitute sheriff. Substitute sheriff? Yes. The sheriff was out of town, and oh. a special deputy named Hamilton Meade was taking his place. Did Meade send you here? I'm no squealer. I'm not talking. Very well, I'll find out for myself. Here's a little well, you gentlemen had better tie this crook's hands behind his back and bring him to the sheriff's office. I'll be there waiting for you. Easy, steady, big fellow. One fellow there! In the sheriff's office, Hamilton Meade sat at the desk, glancing from time to time through the door of steel bars into the cell where the Indian prisoner paced back and forth. The coroner had removed the body of the hermit, and now Meade waited, hoping Poli and Hulk would report on their assignment before the sheriff returned. The door was opened suddenly. What are you holding me? Mashed. Keep your hands on top of the desk. 
Don't put down that gun. Not until you're disarmed. Keep it coming. Bottle. Meade, you have a lot to explain. Raise your hands to shoulder level and stand up slowly. Now take that gun. It'll be safer on the floor in the corner than in your pocket. You must be a henchman of the Indian murderer. Murderer? Kimasabi. Yes? When me bring body a hermit here, me say me kill him. What? Him say me under arrest. Me fight. Then two men come in, knock me out. Two men, huh? Then same ones described by astronomer. I suspected you were working with the killer's mead. Otto's story confirms it. Indeed. Yes, where are the keys to the cell door? Find them for yourself. Very well. Now start by looking in your pockets. Stand still and keep your hands high. Reaching into Meade's coat pocket to search for the key to the cell, the masked man drew out a packet of folded documents. A quick glance showed him the name written on the top one. Jeremiah Colby. Is this the motive for murdering the old man? Judge for yourself, mister. I'm not answering questions. Meade's confidence returned when he saw Hulk appear at the open door behind the masked man's back. Tato also saw the killer and cried, He was coming behind you. I'll get you. The warning came too late. Charging from the door, Hulk leaped on the masked man's back, reached over his shoulder, yeah, grabbed his gun hand, and pulled it overhead. Good work. Meade closed in to drive a smashing blow to the Lone Ranger's chin. But at that moment, the masked man flexed his knees, bent forward, and threw Hulk with his head against Meade. Both outlaws fell to the floor. And as they tried to untangle, the Lone Ranger drew both guns and said, Now we'll have it out. Oh, wait, wait, don't shoot. Then stand close to the cell and keep your hands up. You too, Meade. Yes, yes, all right. That's the way. Unlock the door. Hope, you fool. Why didn't you shoot him in the back? I lost my gun the last time I met him. The last time? The astronomer's camp. He wounded Foley. I just managed to escape. It was a long time getting out of the woods. Open that door, Meade. Now you're free, Toto. Uh, my gun here and death. Please You two, go into the cell. Blundering fools. Show the lock the door, Tuttle. No, wait. We have another prisoner. His name's Polly. Sure. Yep. When I got off the train, I met the professors with Polly as a prisoner. They told me the situation and said you were here. Good. Get into the cell, Polly. Stop me. Uh, here's the key, Sheriff. I'll lock him in. Sheriff, I took some bonds from Meade's pocket. They're on your desk. Jeremiah Colby's name is on them. They're the motive for the murder. I had no hand in the murder. Well, you planned it, Meade. The whole thing is your idea. Polly and I didn't even know Colby had all those Civil War bonds. Polly's already made a statement, Meade. You're in as deep as the others. Sheriff, you've no further need of Toto and me. <laughs> That's right. Now the law will take charge. You've done your part, and I'm mighty obliged to you. Come, Dotto. Uh -huh. Let me see all of you again. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. Goodbye. 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 Well, Sheriff, that masked man and his friend have earned a substantial reward. <laughs> he wouldn't accept one, Professor. I know that for a fact, because I know who the masked man is. I knew as soon as you told me about him that he's the Lone Ranger. Copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. A part of the Lone Ranger is played.